Joining me today is Lila Jana, a social entrepreneur and the founder and CEO of Samasource. They were my angels and they rescued me from the tough life that I had and they gave me a better life. Can you tell me about some of the experiences that really shaped you and led to the work you now do with MicroWork? I had a really seminal experience going to Africa when I was 17. I, I graduated from high school a semester early and I taught English to blind students. Mm -hmm. And I showed up in a small village called Epredi, which is about two hours north of the capital, thinking that I would, you know, enlighten these poor kids. And, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that some of them were extremely literate and very bright. I had kids who could name U.S. senators and tell me about Bill Clinton's visit to Africa. And so very quickly I learned that the populations of places like Ghana are, are full of uh, human talent, but people just haven't had an opportunity to use it. And then what were those next steps for you leading to the founding of Samasource? My first uh, job out of school was as a management consultant. I thought it would teach me about business, and I was shipped off to India in 2005 to go and help take an outsourcing company public on this call center floor. I met one afternoon over lunch a young man who was commuting in from Dharavi, and Dharavi is South Asia's largest slum. It's where Slumdog Millionaire was filmed. And the contrast between where this man woke up every morning in the middle of a slum with open sewers and cholera outbreaks and this high-end technology-filled call center really hit home, and I thought, a light bulb went off and I thought, well, why not use this model of digital work and employment to address poverty? Mm -hmm. And not just internationally, but also here at home where many people are poor because they are living in places that don't have a, a thriving local economy. Mm -hmm. Two years later, I quit my job and I launched Samasource from a friend's futon in Palo Alto. <laughs> We're five and a half years old now and we have moved 20,000 people out of poverty since we started. Samasource has been doing work all over the world. What were those moments that led to this decision that the Sama Group needed to start something here in the U.S.? In 2009, I was writing about Sama Source on a blog mm -hmm. um, that very few people read, but one of them was this man from Ohio who commented on the blog and said, I think you're ruining America. And I was uh, really upset reading this. I got into debt for Samasource and I you know, was living on a friend's futon. But I looked and I saw under his name it had the name of the town where he was in Ohio. So mm -hmm. I just Googled him in the town just to mm -hmm. see if I could find out who he was. And it turned out that this town had had a huge factory closure recently. Mm -hmm. And this man was speaking from a place of pain. So I wrote back to his comment and I said, do you have any ideas for doing something in the States? We'd love to. Mm -hmm. And his, his tune totally changed. He became super positive. He said, I never thought anybody you know, would read my comment let alone you, and, and so yeah, I have all these ideas. He never ended up following up, but it did give me the inspiration to do something here. Wow. And so a year ago, we launched a program called Sama USA. I never knew about anything but minimum wage jobs, because that's all I grew up hearing about. To even just use a computer, I didn't have one at home. We're teaching low-income American community college students how to find their own online work, mm -hmm. doing similar types of work for small businesses. We ran the pilot in the Bayview, which is a low-income urban neighborhood in San Francisco. And I'm very happy to report we just released the results of our year-long pilot that showed that we've been able to increase incomes by 20% with just an 80-hour boot camp. So wh what is next for Salma USA, and how do you plan to see it grow beyond California? We are developing a, a completely online version of our curriculum to teach people at existing community organizations how to add a supplemental online work training to their existing program. Hmm. I see this as a model that could potentially help lift Native American populations hmm. who are very isolated out of poverty. There's a huge need for veterans who have physical injuries or who've been affected by post-traumatic mm -hmm. stress disorder to have a, a, the kind of job that's flexible that they can do from home. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a wide range of, of uh, people that we could help with this intervention. Great. Well, Lila, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thanks.